Is that not beautiful? Is that not beautiful? Wow. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jake Deere. It is such a great honor for me to be here this evening to be your host and moderator for what's going to be an incredibly exceptional evening. And it is a great pleasure to welcome you to the 2023 Global Canada Global Indian Award Gala, proudly presented by the Canada India Foundation. Yes, yes, you're going to be applauding a lot today, so it's all good. Our chosen theme for the evening is nothing short of inspiring. She rises, empowerment from earth and beyond. It is a celebration of the remarkable empowerment of women who transcend boundaries, shaping the narrative of change and progress in our interconnected global community. Without further ado, I invite you to join me in commencing this evening's festivities by extending a warm welcome to our distinguished guests at the head table. And you know, it was very nice to see our wonderful recipient as she made her way through. She just didn't walk through and sit at her, at her chair. She wanted to speak to the children. She wanted to give hugs and shake hands and then walked around. That speaks to this wonderful human that she is. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the head table guests, starting with the chair of Canada India Foundation, Mr. Satish Tucker. I think I'm going to wait for everybody to sit down there. Um, All right, thank you very much, uh, our Chair of Canada India Foundation, Satish Tucker. And then, of course, our great recipient tonight, the Chair of Infosys Foundation and the recipient of the 2023 CIF 
Global Indian Award, Ms. Sudha Murthy. Dr. Yashvir Sunak, Mrs. Usha Sunak, His Excellency Sanjay Verma, the High Commissioner of India to Canada, Mrs. Gunjan Verma, Mr. Siddharth Nath, Consul General of India for Toronto, Dr. Farzana Afridi, Mr. Ratesh Malik, National Convener, CIF. Mrs. Ruchi Malik. Mr. Vikash Sharma, ICICI Bank Canada. Mrs. Shali Sharma. Mr. Norton Kotari and Mrs. Sayer Kotari Kotari Group. Mr. Anshul Ruhil and Mrs. Deepika Ruhil Ruhil Holdings. All right. Now, you were all standing earlier and I was asking you to sit down. You took your while, you sat down. Now I'm going to ask you to stand for the singing of the national anthem of our beautiful countries, India and Canada. Please join Pumber Music and Dance as they lead us in the singing of the national anthems. Yeah. 
Please take your seats. Thank you very much, my friends. Thank you. Two wonderful young people, and, and they sang it with such passion, both the anthems. Isn't that great? Absolutely wonderful. Yes, they are from the Pumber Music and Dance. Incredible. And now please allow me to introduce an extraordinary act, extraordinary act that pays homage to the divine essence of Shiva, Lord Shiva, the cosmic dancer of the universe. Shiva, also known as Nataraj, embodies the wellspring of creative energy that courses through each of us. Now we present a captivating invocation by Pumber Music and Dance Productions, a beautiful tribute to the multifaceted divinity of Lord Shiva. They just need a couple of minutes. How was everybody's Friday, by the way? Did you guys have a good day today? Yeah? Really? What made it special? Every day is special. All right, very good. Anybody have to fight traffic? No? There's no traffic in the GTA, right? There's only two seasons. There's winter and then there's construction, right? Two seasons and that's it. Look at you, it's so good to see all of you dressed up like this on a Friday night. Very, very nice. I know on a Friday night you wouldn't be dressed like this. I've seen Ritesh Malik, I know what he wears on a Friday night. It ain't a suit. <clears throat> but, you know, let me know when you're ready, because I'm not, I'm not Kapil Sharma, I can't do this. <laughs> so Daji, I have to tell you, I saw you on Kapil Sharma. And I, yes, make some noise, not for Kapil Sharma. But for, well, you can make noise for him too, because he is exceptional. Um, I am the couple Sherm of Canada. No, that. <laughs> this is when you applaud. No, I'm kidding. Thank you. Thank you to my wife who applauded. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. That's my brother, Anil Shah. So, Daji, I have to tell you, I saw the show with you and, and, and couple G. You were so engaging. You were so sincere, you spoke with your heart, you know, and it was, I was in awe. I was in awe of the human you are. And you spoke about your husband and how you met and all that stuff. And I tell you, when, when Satish Bhai called me and said, listen, I need your help, I was honored. I said, she is coming, I will be there. Can I bring my wife? And so here we are. And thank you, thank you so much for gracing this occasion with your beautiful, beautiful presence. You know, I saw you walk in and I thought, what a wonderful, divine person. Like, you, you, and, and the way you hugged and the way you spoke with the kids, that's you. And I saw that when I saw you on Couple Shore, but that is you. You are you, and that is awesome. That is really, you are so deserving of this recognition. Are we good? Okay. <laughs> uh. Sarasaram, Bhujagendra Haram 
शंकर It's all mine. Oh, there we go. All right. One more time, folks, for these wonderful young ladies. Pumber Dance and Music School. Absolutely amazing. Just, just wonderful. And each, each movement, each expression signifies something. And, and, and that was a tribute to Lord Shiva Bam Bam Bhole. Very, very nice. Absolutely beautifully done. <clears throat> So, again, a very special welcome to an evening of profound inspiration, dynamic collaboration, and the exaltation of the unyielding determination embodied by the women who rise against all odds. In this regard, it is our distinct honor to introduce this year's esteemed honoree, a beacon of this indomitable spirit, Miss. Sudha Murthy. Before we delve into the rich tapestry of tonight's program, I invite uh, your attention. You can take a look at uh, the program that is at your tables that tells you exactly what's going on and at what time. You can tell my age because I'm doing this. Um, but on the other side is the dinner menu, which is also exciting. Um, so. I do want to acknowledge at this point uh, some of our dignitaries that are present in the room, starting with members of parliament. We have Mr. Chandra, Chandra Arya, Ms. Sonia Sidhu, and Mr. Shuvaloy Majumdar. Members of the Ontario Legislature, Mr. Deepa Kanand, and Mr. Logan Kanapati. The mayor of Oakville is in the house, Mr. Rob Burton. Mayor of Peterborough, Mr. Jeff Leal. Mayor of Whitby, Ms. Elizabeth Roy Mayor. Councillor for the city of Mississauga, Ms. Dipika Demerla. Chancellor of Guelph University, Dr. Marianne Chambers. <laughs> President of Seneca College, Mr. David Agnew. <laughs> President and CEO of William Osler Health System, Dr. Frank Martino. <laughs> President and CEO at William Osler Health System Foundation, Mr. Ken Mayhew. President and CEO of Trillium Health Partners Foundation, Ms. Caroline Riseboro. She travels with her own fan club. So uh, at this point, folks, allow us to present a brief video showcasing our accomplishments over the past year, truly a testament to our unwavering commitment to progress and collaboration, something that CIF does so darn well. 2022-23 has been a testament 
to the enduring spirit and unwavering dedication of Canada India Foundation's executive and board members after a challenging four years of COVID-19 pandemic. As we reflect on the year gone by, the CIF annual gala for 2022 shines as a beacon as one of the most prominent events within our vibrant community. This grand occasion provided us with the privilege of honoring Mr. Anil Agarwal, the chairman of the Vedanta Group, with the prestigious 2022 CIF Global Indian Award. Mr. Agarwal's remarkable journey from a self-made entrepreneur to a global luminary, coupled with his fervent commitment to philanthropy and his beloved homeland, India, places him among the elite ranks of achievers who have received this distinguished accolade. This glittering evening was graced by the presence of more than 1,000 esteemed dignitaries and guests, including Ontario Premier Doug Ford, Canada's Minister of International Trade, Mary NG, and other distinguished figures. Another notable highlight of CIF's year was the ambitious two-week delegation to India where we participated in the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas event in Indore, Madhya Pradesh, among other essential engagements. This delegation, spearheaded by CIF Chair Satish Thakkar and National Convener Ritesh Malik, included the esteemed presence of Ontario's Associate Minister for Mental Health and Addictions, Honorable Michael Tibolo. Furthermore, we were honored to witness Dr. V. I. Lakshmanan, CIF's founding member and past chair, being felicitated with the prestigious Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Award during PBD 2023 by the President of India. During our sojourn in India, we engaged in discussions with key dignitaries, including India's Minister for External Affairs, Honorable S. J. Shankar, and Minister of Information and Broadcasting, Youth and Sports, Honorable Anurag Thakur. These dialogues allowed us to explore various initiatives undertaken by CIF and the Indian diaspora, reinforcing the strong bonds between our nations. CIF's unyielding commitment to wellness as a pivotal public policy component was eloquently demonstrated through the continuation of our lecture and discussion series on Ayurveda. This series, which had garnered significant acclaim from 2020 to 2022, continued to enlighten and inform participants about the multifaceted world of Ayurvedic medicine, its formulations and its myriad benefits. Notably, CIF expanded its Ayurveda initiative from the virtual realm into the physical domain, co-sponsoring the World Non-Communicable Diseases Conference held in Toronto. This conference featured a dedicated session highlighting the transformative potential of Ayurveda in promoting wellness, featuring renowned speakers from across the globe. Moreover, CIF's active participation in integrating India's traditional healthcare systems into the Canadian mainstream culminated in the signing of a historic MOU between the All India Institute of Ayurveda and the University Health Network in Toronto, underscoring our enduring commitment to this endeavor. No initiative better encapsulates CIF's profound commitment to the welfare of our community than the annual charity golf tournament. Over the years, this event has raised substantial funds, contributing to worthy causes such as supporting the families of the fallen soldiers and other noble endeavors. This year's tournament continued this proud tradition of giving back. We also witnessed a changing of the guard in the esteemed offices of the High Commissions of Canada and India, as well as the Consulate of India in Toronto. We extend our warmest welcome to His Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma, the new Indian High Commissioner in Ottawa, and His Excellency Cameron McKay, the Canadian High Commissioner in New Delhi. We shall fondly remember and deeply miss Srimati Apurva Srivastava, the departing Consul General in Toronto, whose steadfast support for CIF left an indelible mark on our organization. As we went
welcome Sri Siddharth Nath, the incoming Consul General. We are confident that he too will continue to be an exceptional representative of the Government of India in Toronto. Last year marked CIF's 15th anniversary. While we take justifiable pride in our accomplishments during this relatively brief period, we remain steadfast in our commitment to setting the bar even higher for future initiatives and achievements. Our endeavors will remain harmoniously aligned with the evolving aspirations of both Canada and India, as well as those of our dynamic Indo-Canadian community. We invite each of you to remain engaged with us and to actively participate in shaping our promising future. Thank you for gracing us with your presence tonight. Jai Hind and O Canada! Jai Hind and O Canada! You did all that in one year? What the heck? Very well done, very well done. Incredible leadership. Uh, folks, um, I'm going to invite the chair of CIF, and everybody knows him. I certainly know him in a professional capacity, and also I'm blessed to call him my friend. But let me, let me speak a little bit about him. Um, it is my pleasure and honor of introducing the visionary chairman of CIF, uh, Mr. Satish Tucker. A dis yes, oh, let me tell you a little bit about him, just in case you don't want to applaud or something. I know you do, and I know you will. A distinguished serial entrepreneur, unwavering community leader, and impassioned philanthropist, Mr. Satish Tucker has amassed a remarkable portfolio of achievements in a remarkably short time. As the president of Excelsior Group, a Toronto-based multi-dimensional business conglomerate, he has spearheaded numerous successful commercial and residential development endeavors, in addition to his ventures in financial consulting. Mr. Tucker also boasts a prestigious legacy as the past president of the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce and as the founding chair of International Yoga Day Canada and the Vedic Spiritual Heritage Foundation. A true trailblazer, he has played a pivotal role in popularizing yoga, Ayurveda, and the art of mindful living within the Canadian landscape. You know, so he does a lot of business, he does a lot of community work, but he makes sure that his health is also taken care of, and he shares that knowledge with everybody. Please welcome Mr. Satish Tucker. Thank you so very much, Jake, for such a kind word and such a warm introduction. And wow, such a pleasure and honor to see each and every one of you in this room. And CIF is nothing but the collective energy of the community and our vibrancy which we want to showcase. And our annual ritual of this gala is a, just a reflection of that. So thank you, each and every one of you, for supporting CIF year after after year, after year and joining us. Excellency Shri Sanjay Verma, High Commissioner of India to Canada, Consul General Shri Siddharth Nath, Chair of Murti Trust, and this year's recipient of Global Indian Award, Mrs. Sudha Murti, <clears throat> Members of Parliament, Provincial Parliament of Ontario, Mayors, 
and councillors of various municipalities, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Canada India Foundation, I extend a very, very warm welcome to you all and a very special welcome to Dr. Yashwir Sunak and Mrs. Usha Sunak, the parents of Right Honorable Rishi Sunak. who specially have joined to accompany Sudhaji. Thank you all for gracing us on this very special occasion. Friends, we are gathered this evening at the universal event space in the city of Vaughan, which we respectfully acknowledge as situated in the territory and Treaty 13 lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. We also recognize the traditional territory of Huron, Wendat, and Haudenosaunee. Friends, it has been my distinct privilege to be part of this great org organization, Canada India Foundation, for nearly a decade. First, as a member of the board, then as a national convener, and for the past three years as chair. I'm honored to have followed the footsteps of Dr. Lakshmanan, Mr. Ajit Someshwar, and Mr. Anil Shah, visionary Indo-Canadians who are the three of the co-founders of CIF and chairs preceding me. And yes, I take pride in what CIF has achieved in the past three years, and overall in the journey of almost 16 years. And I want to highlight the past year more, the three key policy objective which we have established as a pertinent to CIF. One, continue to push for the stronger Canada-India ties and enhance awareness and mutual understanding. Number two, promote the involvement of women in all aspects of life at the CIF level and be involved more actively with the local community at civic, regional, and national level. Friends, the emergence of India as a potential one of the world's top three economies combined with the commitment to the democratic value makes it a natural partner for Canada and events of the past two weeks, beginning with the statement by the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in the Parliament, have put a damper on the dedicated efforts by CIF and the Indo-Canadians community in general towards strengthening the Canada-India relation. CIF strongly believe that Canada's Indo-Pacific strategy can only be successful if its economic, and political ties with India, one of the key partners in that strategy, are strong. And these, and these ties depend on a mutual understanding of each other's national security and needs the willingness to address the areas of discord through the sustained diplomacy unencumbered by the local political compulsions. And CIF looks to engage with both governments to help resolve the disagreements and re-energize trade talks and other interactions at the government-to-government -government level, complemented by engaging also with the smaller urban areas of Canada on investment opportunities with India. Friends, the highlight of CIF's proactive engagement with India was its successful two-week mission earlier this year. The mission, which also included Honorable Michael Tribolo, Ontario's Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addiction, included the participation in the Pravasi Bharti Divas in Indore, meeting with India's Minister of External Affairs, Honorable S. Jay Shankar, Minister of Ayush, Honorable Sarabhananda Sonowal, 
the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Honorable Adi Yogi Adityanath, Yogi Shibaba Ramdev, Sister Shivani, and many others. CIF was also proud to witness Dr. V. I. Lakshmanan's CIF's founder, member, and past chair, becoming the third CIF member to receive Parvasi Bharatiya Samman Award. <laughs> and joining previous recipient, late Vasu Chanchalani and Ramesh Shotai, friends, there cannot be a better testament to the caliber of CIF. CIF also took the lead in educating Canadians about India's ancient healthcare system of Ayurveda and yoga as a preventative solution to the chronic diseases, as well as mental health. And to our soaring healthcare budgets, our initiative included the organization of Canada India Healthcare Summit, co sponsorship of the World Non Communicable Disease Congress, facilitation of an MOU to be signed between. All India Institute of Ayurveda and University Health Network, an exclusive $1 million research fund with University Health Network to support research into integrative medicine incorporating Ayurveda. And friends, earlier this month, CIF joined hands with the University of Guelph to launch Global Thought Leader in residency program at the university with Mr. Vikas Svarup, former High Commissioner of India in Canada, as the first person to hold that position. It is something which we hope will grow over the years and firmly establish CIF as a thought leader in the Canada-India space. Friends, this has been a great year in the space for India, capped by the success of the Chandrayaan mission to the moon, and proudest highlight of the mission was the leading role played by many women scientists and engineers in its success. And that and the recent G20 declaration on the empowerment of women and girl, girls led us spontaneously to our theme for the gala, She Rises. And friends, no one exemplifies our gala theme better than Mrs. Sudha Murthy, the recipient of this year's Global Indian Award. She is a trailblazer for the aspirations of Indian women, which has seen them reach the pinnacle in all walks of life in just two generations. I'm proud CIF started the International Women Day during my term, celebrating the achievements of Canadian and Indian women, and I'm sure CIF will continue to promote women's achievement, not only in India, but also in Canada as well. Friends, CIF has always demonst demonstrated profound commitment to the welfare of both Indo-Canadian and broader Canadian community. On our annual golf charity tournament, has over the years raised substantial funds to support the families of the fallen soldiers and other noble endeavors. Last year, CIF celebrated Truth, National Truth and Reconciliation Day, honoring the indigenous people of Canada, coinciding with our award gala, and when the Anishwabe Health Foundation was presented with a check of $50,000 by the 2022 Global Indian Awardee, Mr. Anil Agarwal. And friends, one of the area CIF will be addressing is a framework to support Indian international student in Canada who face a challenging situation with the housing and other services. Another initiative that CIF executives are seriously looking is to facilitate the establishment of a CIF venture fund to support startups in the community, especially by youth. The fund will not only be supporting them financially, but also find mentors who are qualified to set them on the right tracks to success. Another area CIF executives 
are working actively for some time is to acquisition of our own physical space for the various in-house activities like seminars, mentorship sessions, community services, and this will improve the efficiency of all our operations and help us to meet our objectives in a timely manner. Friends, I want to end by expressing my absolute admiration and heartfelt appreciation to our board, consisting of National Convener, Mr. Ritesh Malik, Co-Convener, Ms. Sunita Vyas, Treasurer, Mr. Garish Kekre, Secretary, Ms. Hema Bhatt, Past Chair, Mr. Anil Shah, and CIF Director Operation, Dr. Pavan Chankotra, Senior Fellow, Mr. Kalyan Sundaram, and Communication Director, Mr. Binoy Thomas, for the unstinting support that I have received over the years. It has been a most wonderful journey. Of course, none of that, what I have done at CIF, would have been possible without my family, my daughter Nikita, and my son Mayank being fully behind me and encouraging me both at the home and also during my many CIF events as a volunteer. Thank you all, and please enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. We'll auction his speech later on. You know, uh, Satish, as, as I listen to you uh, and listen to the objectives that you've uh, set uh, with the board, you know, the world just went through an incredible global health crisis and the work that CIF did during that time. And then to go from there and put the organization on a swift course to ensure that you meet your objectives and listening to all that you want to achieve, it is admirable and very much appreciative for the good of Canada and India. So well done, sir, and thank you, and congratulations to you and your entire board. One of the things that, you know, uh, events uh, have our sponsors and, you know, partners and friends that come out, and, and that is absolutely wonderful. We're blessed that we have all that uh, today. Our uh, title sponsor, is ICICI Bank Canada. Yes, make some noise for ICICI Bank Canada. I would like to invite uh, Mr. Vikash Sharma. He's the president and the CEO of ICICI Bank Canada, our esteemed title sponsor, to introduce His Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma, the High Commissioner of India to Canada. Please welcome Mr. Vikash Sharma. Good evening, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. We are honored to have with us this evening the High Commissioner of India uh, to Canada, His Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma. Uh, Mr. Verma has had a long and illustrious career with uh, Indian Foreign Service since 1988. He was stationed at the Commission of India, Hong Kong, and at the embassies of India in the People's Republic of China, Vietnam, and Turkey. Uh, before serving as Council General of India in Milan, Italy. He also served as the Indian Ambassador to the Republic of Sudan. Following his tenure in Sudan, High Commissioner Verma served as Joint Secretary Global Estate Management and later as Additional Secretary Administration and Cyber Diplomacy in the Ministry of External Affairs, New Delhi. Uh, before arriving in Canada, he served as the Ambassador of India to Japan. I now invite His Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma uh, to come on stage and address this gathering.
honorable guest of honor shrimati sudha murthy ji cif chair cif national coordinator members of cif who have taken pain to invite me here members of parliament members of provincial parliament friends ladies and gentlemen first of all i would like to extend my greetings to cif for yet another extremely successful gala event i'm also i'm also tempted to congratulate them on such a beautiful audience that you have gathered here sudha murthy ji is well known we read her books we get inspired by what she does i only hope that some of us follow her path and start giving back to the community the way in which she has been doing thank you very much ma'am all of us just saw a beautiful dance form for shiva let me tell you that i see a lot of tridevs here all shiva brahma and vishnu why i say all of you have a form of brahma in you because you are originating the relationship between india and canada that is extremely important you are taking the risk of voicing your opinion in order to further deepen and strengthen the relationship between our two countries so all of you are playing a role of brahma as far as india canada relation is concerned not only that all of you are also playing the role of vishnu you are keeping that relationship alive that is the role of vishnu in the world so i can see a lot of vishnus around in this room who are taking the relationship forward who are keeping the relationship alive who are looking to further the uh, relationship between our two countries shiva in his benign form whenever there is heat ganga comes out of shiva that is the time that is the moment which satish ji was just talking about this is a time when the heat is there we need to cool it down we need shivas in his benign form we need ganga to come down and cool the temperature which is there in our current bilateral relations if i look at cif wonderful work done over the years last since last year i have been i have been participating in their events and i must say all the events are well attended well appointed and the objectives have been very well fulfilled when i look at the indian opportunities which is what cif is trying to bridge between canada and india economy is a big part today fifth largest economy 3.7 trillion dollar us but still my per capita income is below 3000 dollars so therefore on one hand the government has the capacity to invest in infrastructure the government has capacity to invest in the well being of people but people do not have the ability to buy the things that they need what should be the next step the next step should be to take it further so that people have the capacity to buy what they want and ladies and gentlemen i just wanted to take you down that path by 2026 if everything works well will be 5 trillion dollar economy let's move forward by 2028 we should be an 8 trillion economy by then we would have become the third largest economy on this earth let me take you forward by the year 2032 we would be inshallah 2000 uh, 12 billion uh, 12 trillion dollar economy by the end of the amritkal which is 2047 
we should be. $26 trillion economy in US dollar terms. $34 trillion in Canadian dollar terms. And it is not only the economy which will grow, it will be the per capita income which will grow as well. We have an ambition to have 15,000 US dollars per capita income achieved by the end of Amrit Kal, which will put us in the developed countries league. That is the opportunity I was talking about. That opportunity will drive further activities from CIF and similar other organizations. When I look at the technology, the chair of CIF talked about Chandrayaan. There are so many other schemes which are closer to Chandrayaan. If you look at the Vande Bharat mission, if you look at Aditya mission, if you look at various other financial inclusion missions, all these are technologies. And these technologies are today well recognized in the world. If you look at the G20, what happened there? People did recognize what India has achieved with the help of not only Indians in India, but with the help of friends of India abroad as well, which I see here. When we look at the culture, of course we know an Indian should dance and sing, that's fine. But if we also encourage others who are not Indians, who are not of Indian origin, also to song, do song and dance, that is the time when our culture has arrived at the global stage. I'm glad to say that in Canada, I have seen that happening many times. And therefore, thank you very much for all your participation in expanding the culture of India outside India in this manner. Last opportunity, there are many, but I'll, I'll just mention this one here, is the opportunity in India's traditional knowledge. What is India's traditional knowledge? Ayurveda, yoga. So we, we are so proud of our traditional knowledge that we formed a separate ministry of Ayush to look after them. So can we also promote India's traditional knowledge in the lands far away? And these are not political. These will not take jobs away from people. This will create jobs. This will stabilize people's psychology. This will stabilize people's lives. And I'm very glad to note that the provincial government of Ontario has given an impetus on yoga and well-being. Thank you very much, uh, uh, and I would like to pass this on to the Premier of Ontario. Uh, now, the current status of relationship, which was mentioned a bit, uh, the governments will deal with whatever the political relation is. And what we, what I would urge all of you to do is what you do the best. You do business. You do advocacy. You teach people. You grow students into entrepreneurs. That is what I would urge all of you to remain engaged with. These are the areas which are not going to be affected. There could be emotional outbursts. India is a very emotional country. There could be emotional outbursts. But there is no regulatory hindrance to all of these. Therefore, these opportunities existed yesterday. These opportunities exist today. So please look at those opportunities, take them forward, do the advocacy so that the bilateral relation between India and Canada is further expanded, strengthened, and deepened. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me. Namaskar. Good night. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for your wonderful words. I love the analogy of the Tridev. Um, now we embark on the distinctive segment of the evening, one that has been synonymous with CIF for the past 16 years, the CIF Global India Award presentation. Please join us in, uh, in welcoming Ms. Vaiz Sarma, who represents the sponsors of this year's award, Qatari Group and Rohil Holdings, to commence 
this prestigious ceremony. Please welcome Ms. Vais Sarma. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vais Sarma, and I stand here today on behalf of the Gothari Group, as well as Rohil Holdings, to present with a very, very privileged and unique opportunity to introduce to you the recipient of the Canada India Foundation, CIF, Global Indian Award 2023. To none other than the chairperson of the Murthy Trust, the one and only Mrs. Sudha Murthy. The CIF Global Indian Award annually highlights an individual who has demonstrated highest levels of excellence in their chosen fields and does enhanced the image of the global Indian diaspora. We have had some of the most inspiring figures in the past who were recognized with this prestigious award in its brief history. And this evening's recipient truly belongs to this elite group. Sudha Murthy, as we have heard numerous times by now, is a trailblazer for the women of India and elsewhere. She's a double, yes, a double gold medalist in engineering during her undergrads and graduate studies. The first woman engineer at Telco. The person who planted the first seed for Infosys that grew to be one of India's and the world's technology powerhouses. She's a philanthropist and a prolific author. But and I'll pause here. The Sudha Murthy that you see, hear, talk, and engage with is a very different lady. She's very warm, extremely humble, and exudes strong Indian family values. For those of us who probably have had a brief opportunity yesterday to engage with her, would exactly understand what I'm talking about. She has written numerous books and presented many theories and concepts on social norms. One of my personal favorites has been her thought behind her attachment in detachment concept. And I see her really smiling when I'm talking about it in case anybody is not aware of what the attachment in detachment concept is, I would really encourage you to please pull it up in YouTube. I assure you it will have a very special resonance to all of us, especially Indians living outside. Now let me test our audience here for some fun facts about Mrs. Murthy. Does anybody would like to take a guess on who Mrs. Murthy's favorite film star during her college years could have been? Sorry? 
Well, I think our crowd here has done their homework very well. My intel tells me she had been a huge fan of Dilip Kumar all her college years. And Mrs. Murthy, in case you need to correct me, please feel free to do that. I see her briefly nodding, so it looks like I got it right. Mrs. Sudha Murthy, or rather, I should call you Madam. CIF is extremely proud and honored to present to you today the Global Indian Award 2023 for your philanthropy, <laughs> education, entrepreneurship, engineering acumen, business excellence, commitment to sustainable development, and yes, for having a very, very large and motherly heart, especially for the girl child. Thank you for all that you have done, you are doing currently, and you will be doing in future for all of us and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, before we invite Mrs. Murthy to the stage to receive her honor and award, can I please request everyone to take a few moments of your time to look at the screens behind and on the side of mine to learn a little bit more about Mrs. Murthy and get more inspired as the evening progresses. Thank you. Ordinary individuals often become symbols of extraordinary change. The story of Mrs. Sudha Murthy shines as a beacon of inspiration. Born in a quaint village in Karnataka, India, she began her journey from humble beginnings that would ultimately impact countless lives. Mrs. Murthy was born in Shigaon, a small village in Karnataka in 1950, a place where values were nurtured and dreams were shaped under the vast sky. Fueled by her thirst for knowledge, Sudha pursued an education that led her to achieve a degree in electrical engineering from the renowned BVB College of Engineering, Hubli, where she won a gold medal for her exceptional academic performance. Later on, she considered the option for higher studies and went to pursue her M.E. in Computer Science in 1974 from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and later received a gold medal from the then Karnataka Chief Minister for topping both the final exams. Sudha Murthy's journey into the corporate world began with an audacious step that would redefine norms. In a time where gender bias was rampant, she spotted a job advertisement that boldly stated, lady candidates need not apply. This blatant exclusion fueled her determination. Undeterred, Sudha channeled her frustration into action. She penned a powerful letter to the MD of the company who was none other than J.R.D. Tata himself, challenging the discriminatory ad and advocating for women's rightful place in the workforce. Little did she know that her words would resonate so profoundly. J.R.D. Tata, a visionary leader, recognized the courage in her letter. Impressed by her conviction, he personally called her and extended a job offer, breaking barriers and Mrs. Murthy became the first ever female engineer at Telco. Sudha Murthy's resolute response transformed her story from a simple application to a symbol of empowerment. Her journey highlighted the immense power of raising one's voice against injustice, inspiring generations, and leaving an indelible mark on India's corporate landscape. At the heart of Sudha Murthy's journey lies a closely-knit family that has been a constant source of strength and inspiration. 
Her family stands as a testament to unwavering support and shared values. Together, they have not only nurtured each other's dreams, but also fostered a legacy of compassion and philanthropy that transcends generations. Balancing her career with her role as a loving wife and a devoted mother, Sudha proved that her strength was not limited to one sphere of life. Her journey also embraced another remarkable chapter as she became the mother-in-law to Rishi Sunak, who would later emerge as a significant and influential figure on the global political stage. This stands as a powerful testament to her family's deeply ingrained values of not only service, but also exceptional leadership. Sudha's life took a transformative turn when she co-founded the Infosys Foundation with her husband, N.R. Narayana Murthy. Through this foundation, Sudha has touched countless lives, extended her generosity and compassion far and wide. From building schools and hospitals in rural areas to establishing libraries and supporting the underprivileged, Sudha Murthy's philanthropic endeavors have had a profound impact on education, healthcare, and social welfare. Today, Sudha Murthy's journey reminds us that from the humblest of beginnings, extraordinary change can be ignited. Her legacy is a testament to the power of determination, compassion, and the potential within each individual to create meaningful change. Sudha Murthy's life is a reminder that our stories are not just our own, but threads woven into the tapestry of humanity's progress. In honoring Sudha Murthy, we celebrate not just her accomplishments, but the embodiment of empowerment and change. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 CIF Global Indian Award goes to truly deserving Ms. Sudha Murthy. If I can please invite for the award presentation Mr. Satish Tucker, Chair of CIF, and Mr. Ritesh Malik, National Convener CIF, to escort Ms. Sudha Murthy to the stage. I would also like to invite CIF Award sponsors, Mr. Norton Kotari of the Kotari Group and Mr. Anshul Ruhil of Ruhil Holdings. And, and I got to tell you that uh, Ms. Sudha Murthy becomes the first woman to be honored with this distinguished award. I would also like to now invite the High Commissioner of India, His Excellency Sanjay Kumar Verma, Consul General Siddharth Nath, Mr. Vikas Sharma, President and CEO of ICICI Bank Canada, and Dr. V. I. Lakshmanan as well to come up for a photograph.
All right, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. If I can please invite uh, our wonderful recipient to come up and uh, say a few words, or say as many words as she's like. <laughs> bearers, MPs, government officers, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear children, if they are here. It's an honor to get an award from your country. Actually, CIF is like Krishna, you know, in Mahabharata Krishna. Krishna is son of Devaki as well as son of Yashoda. He had two mothers. One was his biological mother, Devaki. Other one was one who brought him up, Yashoda. So are you. You are born in India. You are settled here. This is your Yashoda, and that was Devaki. And you belong to both countries. You belong to both countries. You are a bridge between two countries. And you are the carriers or catalysts and carriers of our culture in a different land. You please keep it up. There's a very funny thing about this award. Where Mr. Narayan Murthy got this award in 2014. And I got in 2023. Probably you are the first couple, I think, who got the both awards. <laughs> On the behalf of Murthy family, I would like to thank, because it's a rare occasion that we too are getting the award from the same country, same organization. We are a blessed one. I always feel very privileged to get so many awards. I'm the only person, I think, who enjoy and get award <laughs> without working. Because everyday work is, for me, it's a joy. Everyday morning, I look forward how I can spend my time to help poorest of the poor because I always believe we, we really don't require so much of wealth in real life. We do require but not so much. The remaining wealth is always for the society. And I've enjoyed my work. Every day is a holiday for me. So thank you very much for giving an award for my holidays and appreciating my work. If someone appreciates, you know, there is always a detachment, but when appreciation comes, there is an attachment. So with all those things, when our own people appreciate your work, you feel very nice. Like every woman, when she goes home, her mother's side people appreciate, she feels happy. I felt the same way that my own people in different land, working hard and giving me this award. Thank you very much. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind. She didn't have any notes. She spoke from the heart. I still have a lot of notes. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Love you. You know, um, uh, uh, Miss Murthy G, um, I was debating whether I should call her by first name or should I call her auntie or should I call her Miss Murthy. So um, we're going to have a fireside chat right now. And the person who's going to engage in this conversation, lead the conversation, is somebody who I just, I've known since she was a teenager. And I have seen her grow to this wonderful, exceptional leader and humanitarian. And I'm so proud of the work that she has done. And just a little bit about her. 
Uh, Ritu Gupta is the co-founder and the chief strategy officer of Rogue Insight Capital Limited, the private venture capital arm of the Gupta Group, focusing on investing in Canadian startups with female and or minority leadership. Very focused. She's also a speaker, an advocate, a philanthropist, and the ambassadoress of the Gupta Group, where she focuses on creating impact and opportunity. Ritu has been honored as one of Women's Executive Network's top 100 most powerful women, as well as Canada's top 40 under 40. This is a young person, a young leader who understands relationships, and I'm so proud to have her here join as she takes on this conversation. Please welcome Ritu Gupta. Testing, there we go. Perfect. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. Welcome, Murthy G. It is so wonderful to have you here. You are such an incredible inspiration. For, for all of us here, we see you as a woman's advocate. For me, being born in Canada and being, I'm in real estate, so I'm also in a male-dominated industry. I'm also a minority. All of the work that you've done is such an inspiration. It really, it really pushes us to achieve our dreams. So I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. You're not just an advocate. You're someone that has changed the course of history, and you're making it her story. So I love it, and I'm so proud to be sitting here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we will just have a casual chat. I have some questions. Feel free to take the questions, the answers, anywhere that you would like. We saw this amazing video. We've seen all of the roles that you've played. You're a nanny. You're a mom. You're a philanthropist. You're an advocate. You're an author. You're a leader. What I would love to know is out of all of these roles, do you have a favorite? And which role do you feel you've been able to make the most impact? Thank you for this question. I have a request. You can ask me anything, whatever I know, I will answer with my limited knowledge, but no political questions, please. Perfect. <laughs> That's the first request. Second thing, don't ask me before when I was married, who paid for the hotel bill when I and Mr. Murthy went? Because I always paid because my husband was unemployed. So <laughs> don't ask that one. Okay. I love it. <laughs> now, I have played many roles. Every woman plays many roles. It's not only me. In this August gathering, every woman you look at in their life, peep in their life, they have played similar kind of roles. Maybe I got more roles, I think. <laughs> I have enjoyed every role. You know, I have a different philosophy. In real life, many things we dream we ask, but we may or may not get it. So, so many roles, many situations come in such a way that you have to take that role. But if you have an attitude, you know, aptitude for that, or if you really enjoy whatever I get, then you enjoy everything. In my case, I have that. Whatever role I get, I enjoy. So I enjoyed as a teacher, I was very fond of teaching. I enjoyed as a philanthropist, helping poorest of the poor. And as an author, I enjoyed writing. So whatever role you give, I will work my level best to make it my level best, very good. And I try to, I always enjoy that role. So it's hard for me to tell. However, you ask my students, they say, I was very good teacher, maybe that could be the one of them. I do not know, but I've enjoyed every role. Beautiful. It's, it's so nice to hear you say that, especially when you received your award. You said, thank you for giving me an award for my vacation. So it's very clear to all of us here that you enjoy every role that you play, which is, which is such a blessing. 
Okay. It seems, when we watch this video, we could see that even at a young age, you had so many dreams, so much, so much passion was within you. And it, it seems that your parents were also so supportive. When you were small, did you have a dream of being where you are today? And can you tell us about how you went about achieving that dream? Definitely, I did not dream this. I didn't dream. I was brought up in a middle-class family. My father was a doctor. My grandfather was a high school teacher. I come from a teaching family. My mother was a school teacher. So I never imagined uh, life will be like this for me. But at the age of 15 or 16, I decided to follow my passion. By that time, I realized what's my passion. I always liked applied science. So I decided to do engineering. But even as an engineer, I never thought what, I am, what I'll be later. I said, look, I enjoy it. And I like engineering. Let me do it. I never went behind marks. I went behind knowledge. And byproduct of that was a rank. So when I was married to Narayan Murthy and we were in Bombay, we started Infosys. I never imagined Infosys will be so big. None of them. I accept life as it comes. And that gives me less disappointments probably. And that's the way I have lived. Like, oh, I should make a lot of money. I should become famous. None of them were my criteria. I liked engineering. I will do. We, Murthy wanted to start Infosys, I will help. Whatever I get, I will do it well, and I'm passionate about working hard in whatever field, you know, in that situation, what I get. That's so beautiful. It's so nice to hear you say that you put your passion not behind the marks, but behind the knowledge. And it shows you have multiple gold medals, and that is, and especially in a field where it was, it was all men, that is so brave and so, so courageous. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm sure that there's so many women here, especially, that are in male-dominated industries. And you, from day one, said, I'm going to pursue engineering. I'm going to go into applied science. And you knew that it was all men. Did you have any fears? And how did you overcome those fears? Where? In college or in work? Both. Work. College first. College okay. first. <laughs> well, I, when I joined engineering college, boy. Boys felt there is an unusual animal in the zoo, okay? They were not used to having girls in college, you know. So they felt very funny and they did not know which desk should be given to me, the first one or the last one. And it was in the year 1968, 55 years back, in a small town in India, in Karnataka, where it is unheard. People felt something is wrong with me, maybe psychologically because I'm going into a man's domain. Teachers also felt uncomfortable because there's a girl sitting in the class and they all felt it is a man's job, man's field. You have to do smithy, carpentry, welding, electrical fitting. How this girl will do? Maybe she will be like stay a couple of months and she will leave and go. I decided that I have to do this means it is like taking a challenge. Why one should be scared? Many people are scared of failures. I'm not scared of failure. I said, what will happen? I will do engineering, okay? Suppose I get less marks, then what happens? I said, no, I will not allow to get less marks. I will study well. And nobody talked to me. Nobody talked to me. Not a single boy talked to me for first six months, first semester. I said, doesn't matter. Let me understand there are a lot many stones in my class and I'm sitting all alone. That's the way I looked at it. So when you can't talk to a stone, so a group of stones, I don't have to talk. And I said, I will not depend on anyone to help me out. Actually, very little I knew. It is a part of Bhagavad Gita. Later part of my life, I came to know. Arjuna was asked, Arjuna asked Krishna, who is the best friend and who is the worst enemy? Krishna says, you are the best friend to yourself. You are the worst enemy to yourself. I learned it when I was 18. 
if I have to be successful in my career, in my education, who is my best friend? It's me. I have to work hard. Who is my worst enemy? It's me. Get scared. Extremely sensitive for failure or not getting good marks and leave and go away. I said, no, I will not do that. Come what may be, I will sit and study. I will not talk to anyone. I will not miss a single class because nobody will give me notes. Actually, my four years or eight semester, I did not miss a single class. I did not attend any weddings. I said, if it is a wedding on working day, I will not come, but I will not miss my class. So I, I put my 100% in that. Atmahi Atmano Bandhur, Atmahi Ripo Atmana. That means who is your Bandhu? You yourself. Who is your enemy? You yourself. So that courage of accepting reality, accepting failure, not getting scared, always led my life what I am today. Then my degree or my money. You know, if it is something wrong, I will stand up and talk. What will happen? Nobody will say, nobody will put me to death. No, that's okay. Then ask. The same courage, I took it in engineering and I did. The same courage made me to write a letter to GRD Tata with the same courage that, Mr. Tata, you are wrong because half the society in, in our country, half society consists of women and you say women, in your company says women need, no, lady students need not apply. That's unfair. No country can come up if women are not working. And I raised my voice. What will happen? JRD will not reply. But let me tell him, no, I, I, I'm not happy what you think. But he was, many people tell me, oh, we'll send you a postcard and you'll get me a job. I said, no, <laughs> it is not the postcard I, I got the job. It is the JRD's vision actually got me a job. Because JRD said, here is the girl, 21, 23 years old, come from a small town, no money, no connection in any way, and questions a chairman of a company and writing to him, you are wrong. He said, I'm amazed. Somebody is pointing out that. Call that girl and tell her and treat her like any other candidate. Ask her the same questions. And in case she, she is capable, then we'll think it. So it is not my greatness writing a postcard, but it was his vision, his greatness. He changed the rule, saying that if the girl is competent, she should be allowed in a place like that. When, when I think of JRD, he had a blue eyes. He had a French mother, actually, and a Parsi father. He had a blue eyes. Always, everyone said, oh, you're so handsome. For me, those blue eyes always remember, reminded me of vastness of a sky and the depth of a sea of compassion, of justice. It always gave me enormous courage. Here is a man with that kind of a compassion and a courage and uh, justice if somebody asks something. So he changed my life forever. And that made me to ask more and more questions when there's the injustice. You know, even at the bus stop, you know, there'll be a queue. As a child, I used to do, somebody supersedes. In India, it is a lot more there, you know. They, they don't send, you know, the bus comes, the people, person behind you will go first. I, as a kid of eight, nine years, I said, no, you can't go. I'm standing before you. You know, if you want to go, then come early, earlier than me. My mother used to tell me, why are you fighting in the bus stop? I said, no, it is not fighting. It is the justice that if there is a queue, the, it should go, uh, we should go as per the queue, not someone behind me. Mm -hmm. Except if there is a pregnant woman or an old lady. It's really beautiful that you give all the credit to Mr. Tata because I think for all of us, we're hearing your story and yes, 100%, he had the compassion and the vision to listen to you and to say, you know, she needs to be part of this company, but it started with your vision and your determination and your, your art of persuasion, which is amazing. And that also comes from, from your courage. I think a lot of us here, we lack that courage. We see that there's issues we see that there's problems, but we don't have that courage to, to stand up, as you're saying. Can you give us some advice as to 
how we can do that. How can we have that courage, that same bravery that you have to be able to stand up and to speak our voice and to rise and to make that change? I'm ready to lose. I'm ready to lose. Okay. So why people don't stand up and ask questions? They say, in case that person gets upset. You know, my boss, I used to do the same thing. I said, sir, these things I did not agree. You should explain to me. Okay. And he said, I don't have time. I said, okay, sir, whenever you have time, I will come. Please explain. Because I'm ready to lose. Suppose he may not give me a promotion. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When you put, when you always think of uh, you know, general good ahead of your personal good, then you get the courage. If you always think, what will I get? Will I lose my, you know, somebody will talk about me like this. I don't care what people talk. People can talk anything. I'm in philanthropy. When I give money and they, people want more money, then they say, you, you are like Aishwarya Rai, which is not true. <laughs> okay. If I don't give money, she's a monster, which is also not true. I know what I am. I don't want other person should justify or Tell me what I am, because I know inside what I am. So I don't worry about what people talk. They may talk anything. You should not worry. And that is the courage of asking questions or getting up. Actually, I got admission abroad, you know, in US to do my PhD. So I got a job at Telco and came back home. And my father was my best friend, I'm sure. For every daughter, father is the best friend, more than a mother. Mother scolds, father doesn't, as simple as that. My father was my best friend and he said, uh, what did you do, why did you go to Pune? I told him, I went there, I wrote a letter to JRD, they called me for an interview, I did the interview and I got the job. He said, are you going? I said, no, I'm not going. I said, why are you not going? I said, no, I want to do my PhD in US and I want to go. He said, but I gave you good education, that's what I thought, because you have to walk the talk. When you open the Pandora box saying that why women are not equal to men, you know, and when they have given you an opportunity, if you go, that means you are running away from reality. You are not what you have talked, you are not walking it, and that is not a good education. He said, uh, and he told me, you will go abroad, you may or may not come back. You learn a lot of money probably. But what about what you talked? Otherwise you could have kept quiet, no? They need not have taken ladies. So, always in life, my father woke me up and said, walk the talk. And that is called courage. What you talk, you should mean it. You should always think of public good or in, in general, the good to the society. And then, you should work in the direction. Today, I'm very happy. In my college, in instrumentation, there are 60% girls, 40% boys. So I tell them, girls look after boys, they are in minority. <laughs> and when I was alone, I know what it is to be alone. Don't make boys like that, you know, in small group, okay? Be, come, be nice to them. What I'm telling you is, when you want to change something, it takes time, it takes courage, it, it takes a lot of hard work. Then only it is possible. Otherwise, you know, I always tell life would be like this in India. You take a job, don't oppose anybody, just go to office, come back, buy a 30 by 40 site. India, that's a big site. Okay? Unlike Canada, we can't buy big houses because we don't have that kind of a land. Color it yellow color. Husband and wife go to Singapore, Malaysia. America and Canada, see Niagara Falls, World Trade, World, no, World Trade Center is not there. Okay, Statue of Liberty, come back. Lead your life and die one day. And most people do that. That is not life. It is not life. Life means have courage, do good things. You may, you may make some mistakes, but don't make the same mistakes again. Learn from every mistake. Lead a life worth living. Not... Just, you got, you know, you stayed, got married, had children and died. Apart from that, there is another life is there. And that life I always appreciate.
It is so, so beautiful, and you're giving us all so many lessons. I feel like you all should be taking notes. I'm definitely taking notes mentally of everything that you're speaking of. And you mentioned the Gita earlier. And even when you're saying now, it's written in the Gita. Krishna tells Arjun that you shouldn't be working for the fruits of your labor. That's not what belongs to you. You should just be working to do the work and, and to serve, and to serve humanity. And serving humanity and philanthropy is something that is so important to you. And you have changed so much of the landscape in India because of your philanthropy. All of us here would love to know what got you started in philanthropy. What was it from, you've done so many things in engineering, applied science. Was there a shift in your mindset? What was it that led you to philanthropy? Well, there was it. I'm a storyteller, so I have to tell two stories. One is uh, my grandparents, you know, they were, my grandfather was a simple man. He never went out of Karnataka, never went to even to Delhi. Um, but he was a Sanskrit scholar. In our village, in olden days, people used to come, you know, asking some help. And we, we had 150 acres of land. We used to grow rice. There is the first quality rice, there is the second quality rice. Red rice and green. Today, red rice has become a more expensive than the white rice. In olden days, it was second quality we used to call. Anyway, whenever they will come and ask help in our village, grandfather would tell me, go to the store, if there is a storeroom, go and get uh, from granary a good rice, one major, and give it to that person. He may be a beggar, he may be a sannyasi, he may be a sadhu, he may be a poor man, we don't know. He will never ask, my grandfather will never ever ask, give him one measure. And in the night, my grandmother used to cook the second quality rice for us. And I asked that question, when someone comes for help, you always give good rice. Whenever we want to eat in the night, you always make red rice. Why? My grandfather told Upanishad, quoted and said, you know, why we should give away the best one, etc. My grandmother never went to school. She told me in a simple way. Suppose God comes to our house. What do you give? I said, I'll give the good quality. You know, because he should give me good marks. Okay. <laughs> the kid's seven, eight years old. She said, not that better. If someone comes to our doorstep for help, we should give the best because that person has come in the form of a god. She has never went to school. That was her philosophy. Not the leftover rice or not, not the ghee which is smelling. Don't give that. Otherwise, don't give. But grandfather quoted, you know, Upanishad and told, Dhanam Priya Vaksaitum Shraddha Hidanam, etc. How much time we have left? Because I go on, go on talking. I'm not sure. How much time do we have left? Please tell me, then I will wind up. You know. We're good. Yeah. This is the background I had. When I was 45 years old, my daughter Akshata was 15 years old. And she, on her own, used to go to a blind school and read for a person by the name Anand Sharma. He was blind and he was poor. So she used to go and read for him. She used to also show the scriber to him. So she looked after basically a poor blind boy. One day she came and told me, Amma, Anand Sharma got seat in St. Stephen's College and uh, he doesn't have money and why can't you sponsor him? I was head of the Department of Computer Science, extremely busy in setting the question paper, answer paper, etc. And I was not getting question paper, so I told Akshata, why can't you sponsor him? She said, Amma, you, have, you never give me money in my hand. I never give pocket money to my children. I said, you make a list, I will buy. Make a list, I will come with you, you buy. Okay, I never gave. I said, why do you require? So Akshata says, I don't have even 10 rupees in my hand. And today, her wealth is written in every paper, which is true or may not be true, but everyone writes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she said, papers write wealth, and I don't have even 10 rupees in my hand. How can I sponsor? And then said, I said, okay, you save some money from your birthday and sponsor. Because my mind was not in that while, what she was talking. She said, I, for birthday, you call all her friends home, make idli and sambar and, and fruity, that is the drink in India. Where is the birthday celebration? There is no celebration, there is no money involved in that. Then she said, Amma, please, think it over. You are 45 years old. Because with my daughter, 
and my son, I always keep a good relation like friends. You know, not that they should be scared of me and I should be scared of them. No. We'll talk to each other like two friends. She said, Amma, you're 45 years old. What do you expect in life? What is your remaining life you want to spend? You are well educated. You have a fair amount of money. Do you want to lead a life of glamour? Do you want to lead a life of traveling every country and staying in a five-star hotel? Do you want to do that? What is your aim in life at 45? She asked me. I didn't answer. And she was very, and she told me, if you cannot do philanthropy, Amma, you don't have a right to tell anyone to do philanthropy. And she went away. I, I was setting the paper. I went to the central hall examination table because many examiners were there. And by the time you reached, you know, in India it happened, sometimes this happens, that there was no current and it was postponed. Computer was not working. I sat there, you know, below the ceiling fan of the central college. What did my daughter say? Let me think it over coolly. First 22, 24 years, I worked very hard for my degree because I wanted to beat boys in their own game, okay? Today, I don't look like that. I don't think that way. But that time, I said, everybody looks down upon a girl. She can't do engineering. Then let me beat the boys in their own engineering and show Knowledge does not, knowledge does not have any bias, gender bias. It is only the mind has. Knowledge is free. It is the, it is the asset of those people who work for it. And I wanted to prove it. Next 20 years I worked for Infosys without looking at left or right. For every role I did, receptionist, driver, my husband does no driving, I used to drive drive mad also, okay? <laughs> Every work at Infosys, accountant, programmer, you name a thing, somebody is not there, Murthy will call me, so I come and do the programming, I will do. Now, Infosys has grown, it doesn't require me because it has its own staff, etc. I'm 45 years, I'm head of the Department of Computer Science. What is my aim in life? Suppose God gives me good health, and next 20, 30 years, I do not know how long I live, what is my aim? I said, yes, what Akshata told is true. I was sleeping, my daughter woke me up. She gave me the direction, you have to do philanthropy, and I had that bent of mind. Then I went back and resigned as head of the department. Our, I used to work for a Christ University in Bangalore. Our reverend fathers were my colleagues. They said, ma'am, you don't uh, resign. You are a very popular teacher. You come only twice a week or thrice a week. And I went to Infosys, I said, I'm starting foundation. Thus, I started foundation. Probably it is in our family, it's a hereditary, I suppose. My grandmother did not know how to read and write. I taught her how to read and write at the age of 62. And I wrote about it, how I taught my grandmother to read and write. In my family, it's a tradition, I suppose, elders learn by youngsters. So. Akshata taught me and gave me the knowledge, showed me the way to start philanthropy. So when I got an award from Economic Times somewhere, I called Akshata, you are my teacher. You woke me up, I was sleeping. Please come and grace the occasion. <laughs> you don't have much time, you got the last question. I think we have a few minutes, a few minutes left, yes? Yeah. So I guess this will be the last question then. One of your personal mantras, you always talk about leading a simple life. And you tell your children this as well, that they should lead a simple life. I would love for you to teach all of us here today, what does that mean? And how can we pursue the same mantra? What is simple life means? What I like, I do that. Um, I have a very funny principle. The more you accumulate, more responsibility will be there. Suppose I have a lot of, let's assume, I have very expensive ornaments. Then I should worry when I, tra I travel about 200 days plus days, okay? I travel a lot. You have to keep in a locker, lock the locker, keep the key somewhere else. And when you are abroad, when you are traveling, you will be worried somebody got the key, opened it, that's one. Second thing, to be happy in life, you don't require too much. Good, 
good sleep good food good food means not with ghee and butter okay good healthy food healthy habit and without any much headache you should live like you know i don't have any wish list or your uh, bucket list i don't have any of these wish bucket or bucket list whatever you call all are empty all are empty the moment in life you go on expecting higher and accumulating more and more and more it will affect your life i was in ceylon i will take another two more minutes i will tell you i was in ceylon then the, you know that time the prime minister who was there i won't remember his name he told me go and visit uh, uh, buddhist uh, buddhist temple you know buddha's temple i went there vihara and that uh, swami studied in bangalore so he knew kannada i was talking to him i felt very sorry for that monk he had a golden buddha of this size he had a silver buddha of this size and uh, jade buddha of this size and many small diamond etc were there i said swami ji what do you do with this i asked address the monk swami only he said every night i put them into oh, uh, a, a, a place and put the alarm on and double lock it and keep eight uh, guards and i go home i said my god buddha himself left the kingdom <laughs> left his wife everything he has become a monk and this swami ji has to worry about silver buddha jade buddha diamond buddha i thought why have i told swami ji instead you should have a clay buddha like ganesha kind nobody will take or store buddha nobody will take best is have buddha in your mind and in your heart and live like buddha that is the <laughs> that is the living buddha so if a thief comes to my house what he can steal i think that way books nobody will touch books nowadays <laughs> okay sarees hardly women next generation they wear maybe i'll be the la- like a dinosaur i'll be the last generation <laughs> to wear sarees and all what he can take out of my house bartan like, oh, they are uh, it is better not to b- take it because it makes more noise and cheaper you can get it anywhere <laughs> if you li- lead a simple life your overheads are minimum when your overheads are minimum you get a good sleep you are not worried where i left the keys where i left the keys leave the key anywhere leave the key anywhere whatever you have get that happiness in your heart happiness if you are happy in the heart it radiates on your face it gives you enormous courage in life you can you cannot buy confidence and courage with infosys stock you cannot buy with any gold or jade it should be born within you and you should enjoy every minute of your life it may be a slow rain fast rain, you know simple rain flower blooming beautiful moonlight beautiful sun rays and beautiful different colors which i saw today in your autumn leaves or fall leaves such a beautiful color ekauna chitrakar hai ekauna chitrakar thank you very much for patient hearing being a teacher i know how to manage the crowd <laughs> and particularly my boys in my college were unruly so i could control them very well <laughs> and you people are not unruly so it's easy to control so thanks a lot for giving me this award making me part of canada and india getting this award means honoring philanthropy philanthropy is not a job like people think you give away that is money that is philanthropy it is a science and a art a science to under psychology to understand what the person wants what is the exit policy what is the sustainability and in the long range it is useful or not it is also an art 
because our ancestors have told when you give away, give away with happiness, give away with the good words, give away with ashirvad, danam priya vaksahitam, shraddhahi danam, shraddhahi nadanam, which is a part of Upanishad. So you have, that I learned and now I feel youngsters can take Philon, you know, social work and philanthropy as, as a, a career and they can also get an award like me. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, uh, Ritu. Wonderful job in leading the conversation. Uh, thank you, our, our teacher as well. Uh, you're a teacher of all of us, our wonderful Guruji. <laughs> you were wonderful. Love the quotes from Shri Bhagavad Gita as well. Very, very nice. Um, and of course, I took a lot of notes, which I plan to share with, uh, uh, with the kids. I would like to invite um, our CIF uh, executive board, Mr. Satish Tucker, Mr. Ritesh Malik, Mrs. Sunita Vyas, uh, Mr. Girish Kekere, and Mr. Anil Shah for the award citation which will be presented to uh, our recipient and that will be presented by Satish Tucker and Ritesh Malik. And while that's uh, happening, please be yes, please be seated, thank you. The teacher, Guruji says, please be seated. <laughs> She's saying as a teacher, she used to stand and she used to tell her teachers to, or students to sit first. So as the citation is uh, making its way, uh, let me read it to you. So here's what the citation reads. Oh. Hold on, I gotta organize the photo first. So the citation uh, reads, that'll be hard to carry on the airplane, but okay. <laughs> for being a positive role model for the women of India, building a professional engineering career, and then sacrificing it all to raise a family with strong Indian values, leading major philanthropy initiatives through Infosys Foundation, and now Murthy Trust for the welfare of all society, for setting an example through your humble and caring personality. You are truly a personification of the CIF gala theme for this year, She Rises, symbolizing the accomplishments of the women of India. We at CIF are indeed very proud and deeply honored to bestow upon you this award. You. If I can also please now invite Mrs. Sair Katari, Mrs. Deepika Ruhil, and Dr. Kumar Murthy, Director of Fields Institute of Research in Mathematical Scientists, Sciences on stage for the Czech presentation.
Everybody get close. Look straight to the camera. By the way, as the photo is being taken, uh, I got to tell you guys, you know, the uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the moon is very, very special, right? And I have to tell you, now when I look at the moon, I look at the bright side, but I always I'm so proud of the dark side as well. I think it's just incredible. I, I, I mean, whenever I look at the moon, I say, you know, on the other side is the flag of India. That's absolutely awesome. It's really great. That's great, Jake. Thank you very much. Let's applaud for Jake's comments. That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. If I can please invite uh, Ritesh uh, Malik. Uh, Ritesh is the CIF national convener who's, perpetu who's, who's perpetually affable demeanor is a constant source of positivity. As an entrepreneur with a focus on logistics, Mr. Malik has adaptly ventured into diverse fields including real estate development, human resources, and public relations. His unwavering commitment to the welfare of the Indo-Canadian community and the Canada-India bilateral relationship knows no bounds as he consistently goes above and beyond to ensure that crucial matters are addressed. Please welcome Mr. Ritesh Malek. Thank you, Jake Bhai. Everybody says I have energy, but I think when it comes to you, I cannot match you. Ooh. Namaste. Good evening, everyone. What an evening this has been so far. The fireside chat could have gone on and on and on, but I think I was made a villain today. Ritu looked at me twice and asked how much time I had, and I had to say 10 minutes twice. So I was scared to even walk on stage. I don't know how I'll be treated by everyone. <laughs> but so far, it's good. It is my delightful duty to bring this evening to its conclusion before the more exciting part, final performance, the dinner, the drinks, and of course, networking after that. First of all, our heartfelt gratitude and thanks to the star of the evening, Srimati Sudha Murthy ji for making a memorable evening and unforgettable last few days for the entire Indo-Canadian community. Thank you so very much. I'm sure Ritu got the best out of you and we all feel blessed to have shared your presence and energy in this room tonight. I would also like to give special thanks on behalf of whole Indo-Canadian community to Mrs. and Mr. Sonak for their attendance tonight. Your simplicity, humility, and depth of your love for Indian values, which you have preserved and passed on so beautifully, has won many hearts in Canada. Now we know where Honorable Rishi Sonak and Akshata have got all that from. With this celebration, I would also like to touch upon what is on top of minds today within our community. We have been a peaceful and productive segment of the Canadian population, playing a key role in its economic, political, and cultural space. Over the past few decades, immigrants of Indian origin have proved their mettle by their hard work and their loyalty to the land that welcomed them so warmly. Canada has been a wonderful home for all of us, it's painful for us to see either of our motherland or homeland perceived to be wrong. Our heart beats and is full of love for both our countries. And I'm sure everybody in this room can vouch for that. And it is up to us as community to ensure that this wonderful harmony within the Indo-Canadian community is maintained at all costs. There might arise occasional challenges thrown to us. It happens within the families too. But all of us need to stay on the course and exercise restraint in our reactions to it. Otherwise, we will be, given the, we will be giving the floor over to the elements clearly bent on dividing us. 
look at this room you all represent the diversity and richness of the indo canadian community and the universal values of an ancient culture we all come from by gathering here in such a large number and showing our love and respect for each other we sent a strong message that nothing and no one is going to break us up this is where we all can and must play a bigger role in presenting ourselves in the best possible ways to the world to see recent events may give reason for many us many to be upset and even angry but let us remember canada is our country also we unapologetically unapolog will love our roots i have personally been questioned many times that you know i talk a lot about india but i i have no hesitation in saying i equally love india and canada both we must do all we can to work through these challenging times calmly and with lots of understanding together we can make our critics and enemies disappear just by sending the biggest message of peace and unity that's what we are known for all over the world we are the most productive and peaceful immigrant groups wherever we settle down let us not get emotional or worked up too much yesterday i remember sudha ji put it so beautifully how indians have earned and maintained respect all over the world with their hard work sincerity and following the law of the land let no one build a narrative otherwise at the same time i would urge all of you to get involved even more within the community and the larger canadian mainstream each one of us can play a role in enhancing the image of our community and bringing back the canada india relationship back on track we have work to do and we intend to pursue the already established goals of cif the welfare and unity of the indo canadian community and a close and mutually rewarding relationship between the two democracies together let us work towards identifying opportunities and building on the goodwill that is already there in abundance talking about abundance i would also like to acknowledge and thank all our sponsors who will be formally recognized later all our media partners our executive board mass media for putting together this spectacular show and last but not the least our families who help us by giving and sacrificing their time for larger good we love you all thank you and good night <clears throat> I want to say a special thanks to my dear brother Jake Deer as well for all that he did. <laughs> um, hey, thank you, brother. No, I, I, I love this boy. He's, he's, he's too damn handsome, though. He's, he's a wonderful guy, Ritesh. And I love this organization as well. And Satish, everybody. I remember Anil and Ajit Sumesh were when we did this thing started. Is God bless you for the work that you guys do. you know yes um so folks uh, let me see here as we do another conclusion is going we're going to bring you a jubilant finale dedicated to nari shakti the formidable 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 strength of women whether it's the recent strides in polit political representation within the indian parliament or their remarkable achievements in the realm of scientific exploration it is a cause for celebration Women not only mold our culture but also shape our future. They stand as the bedrock of families and communities. You know, I got to tell you, I'm going to pause here. I am I am blessed and you know, my success is I was raised by my paternal grandmother. I was blessed to serve my my maternal grandmother. My mom is awesome. My mother-in-law was awesome. I have a lovely bride who I'm blessed with, my wonderful daughter who is awesome. I mean my my sister who's amazing I have a boss who's a female life is good life is damn good they take good care of me and I'm so blessed so on that tonight we present a captivating dance performance that embodies the essence of women's empowerment a celebration and dedication through dynamic movements intricate rhythms stylized spins and enchanting 
vocal variations, all complementing the fast-paced footwork of the captivating art form of Kathak. Hey, I think it's a big thing. 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 Hey, I think it's a
One more time, folks, make some noise for the Pumber School of Dance and Music. So, uh, my friends, uh, dinner will be coming to your tables very, very soon. I will, uh, once everybody has received blessings from... Uh, Sudaji, we will do the span, uh, spancer, sponsor recognition. It's Friday night. What do you want? Uh, we'll do the sponsor recognition uh, very, very soon. It's an all vegetarian meal today. You're going to enjoy it. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm excited. As long as my wife doesn't eat all my food, I'm good. Siddharthji, good to see you, your smiling face.
If I can please invite uh, If I can please invite uh, Satish Tucker and Ritesh Malik to present the sponsors uh, for their incredible support. You know, as I mentioned earlier, events like this don't happen without our sponsors. And we very much appreciate them. Without their generous support, this would not happen. They are all listed in the Gala magazine. And if you're from America, the Gala magazine, but they are all listed in the Gala magazine. We invite them. I'm going to invite them very soon. Folks, I'm sure everybody wants to talk to Sudha Murtiji, but she needs her space. If you could please take your seats. Enjoy your dinner. Let's give her her space. Please take your seats. Enjoy your dinner. If I can please invite uh, Ritesh and Satish Bhai up here. All right. Our title sponsor is ICICI Bank Canada. Vikash Sharma, President and CEO of ICICI Bank Canada, if you could please come up. All right. You know, I'm going to mention the names everybody wants, and then I'll do it when your name is called. Just so you're ready, if you could please come to the side of the stage so we can move things along. So, Mr. Vikash Sharma, President and CEO of ICICI Bank, our title sponsor. Thank you to ICICI Bank Canada. While this picture gets taken, our gold sponsor is Turkish Airlines, and I would like to call Fateh Tamil the general manager for Toronto to come up. All right, thank you very much, Fateh. Our gold sponsor, Turkish Airlines, thank you very much. Our silver sponsor, SBI Canada. SBI Canada Bank, our silver sponsor. If I can please invite Ramesh Naidu, the head retail banking, SBI Canada Bank. SBI Canada Bank, our silver sponsors. Oh, here's Ramesh Naidu. And the next ones will be our CIF Award sponsors for 2023, the Kotari Group, as well as Ruhil Holdings. Please, if you could make your way to the side of the stage. That'll be followed by Nick Irfino, INA Professional Corporation, and then Peter and Pauls, followed by Sunray Group, followed by NIMAT. So, the CIF Award Sponsors 2023, Mr. Norton Kotari, President and CEO of Kotari Group. And then 
Anshul Ruhil, Chairman of Ruhil Holdings, CIF Award Sponsor 2023, Ruhil Holdings. And then we have our silver sponsor, IANFINA Professional Corporation, Nick Irfino, the CEO, and yes, INA Professional Corporation. That'll be followed by Anil, Anil Dash, Anil Dash CFO, Peter and Paul, our silver sponsor as well. Peter and Paul's. And then we have Mr. Ray Gupta, Chairman of Sunray Group, Silver Sponsors, Sunray Group. <laughs> Folks, I asked this before, if you could please do Folks, everybody, I know you're, you want to, can you please, Mrs. Murthy is asking for some time. Can you please all sit down? Folks, please take your seats. Let's give our honoree the respect she deserves. Please take your seats. Enjoy your dinner. Everybody, please, let's show respect to our honoree, you know, she's very nice and she moves along, but come on, let's give her that wonderful Canadian Indian respect and let her have her space. Let her enjoy your meal as you enjoy your meal. Thank you. Okay. So we did Anil Dash CFO, Peter and Paul, silver sponsors. Ray Gupta, Chairman, Sunray Group, Silver Sponsor, Sunray Group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you. And then we have our VIP reception sponsor, Mr. Anil Shah, President of NIMAT. Anil Shah from NIMAT. <coughs> Gracious coming up on behalf of Anil. He says he can't have two bald people up on stage at the same time. Santa and Bunta. <laughs> Thank you to NIMAT for their VIP reception sponsorship. Our bronze sponsor, Osmi Homes, Hitesh Javeri. Hitesh, Osmi Homes, bronze sponsor, coming up. And that'll be followed by our next bronze sponsor, Dalip Gore from Aditya Birla Group. Are, for him, oh, okay. I like the fan club that's over there. <laughs> so excited, very nice, okay. And then we have Aditya Birla Group, bronze sponsor, the Leap Gore Aditya Birla Group. Anil, were you coming from Aditya Bir Birla Group? Come, stop serving. We have enough servers. 
I love this man. Thank you very much to Aditya Birla Group for the bronze sponsorship. That'll be followed by Bromed Pharmaceuticals Inc. as a bronze sponsor as well. And now for our bronze sponsor as well, Bromed Pharmaceuticals Inc. If I can invite somebody from the CIF executive to come up. Can I please invite Pankaj Dave to come up? Pankaj Dave to come up on behalf of Bromed Pharmaceuticals Inc., our bronze sponsor. Pankaj? Oh, there you are. <clears throat> and our knowledge partner, our knowledge partner is Seneca Polytechnic. If I can please invite Dr. David Agnew, the president of Seneca College, to receive the knowledge partner recognition. Thank you for your support. Again, our thanks to all the sponsors. This only happened because of your support. And for those of you who were not here, we'll make sure you get the plaques. We want to also take the opportunity to recognize Mass Studios, the creative and execution partner for this year's gala. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we're good. If I can please invite the CIF board to come up for a group picture. The CIF board, please, the Canada India Foundation board members, as well as Girish and Anil and Sunita, please. Otherwise, we'll Photoshop you in, so please come on up. Folks, it's been an absolutely wonderful evening. Again, congratulations to our wonderful recipients, Sudha Murtiji, truly a role model. Yes, for all women and for men, for all of us, all mankind, all humankind, she has risen. Guys, I'd like to invite Pawan Chankotra. Binoy, where are you? And Kalyan Sundaram, please, would you kindly join us? Let's have a big round of applause for the real workers, because we are the face in the front. These are the face behind us. Let's get them, guys. Binoy, where's Kalyan? No, Kalyan, oh, there he's coming. Make some noise for our board and our team. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you very much.
Have yourselves a wonderful evening. God bless each and every one of you. Look after yourselves and each other. And remember to check out the moon. All right. Tomorrow is National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Take some time to think about that as well. Take care and thank you again for your support of Canada India Foundation. I'm going to go sit with my wife and have dinner now.